Hello YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Run Level Zero. I'm your host, Ennit Zero. You know, they say there are a few things that you just don't talk about in polite company. Uh, religion, politics, they're volatile subjects or sure to start a fight. In the bushcraft community, if you want to start a fight around a campfire, just ask what knife is the best or bring up stainless versus carbon steel. Yeah, watch the sparks fly over that. Well, in the world of computing, there are touchy subjects. Which terminal is the best? Or, say, which web browser? Yeah, in, in the modern world, everybody has their favorite browser. and There's no shortage to choose from. Uh, you have, it runs the whole gamut between the modern, full-featured, uh, application-rich environments, all the way back to just basic text-based web browsing. Like eLinks, this is eLinks, runs in the terminal. If I enter in distrowatch.com, you'll see that it renders the website in text. eLinks is pretty neat because it's actually used by uh, distributions such as Adrianopics, which is uh, geared toward the visually and uh, hearing impaired. And it will actually support Braille. So it would, they would use this web browser, eLinks, to render uh, the website in text to a Braille display, as it were, so, so that somebody who was visually impaired could read it. So that's pretty cool. This is just one example of, of a few uh, text-based, terminal-based uh, web browsers. By far, in the, in the community... Uh, not just Linux, but computing in general, there are two web browsers that stand apart and, and are leading the pack uh, as far as favorite browsers. Uh, the first being Google Chrome. Google Chrome is lightning fast. Um, it has a full set of features. You can install applications to it, uh, plugins. It's just a really nice browser and of course it can link up with, with your Gmail account, your your Google Docs and that sort of thing. So it's, it's very feature rich. A concern that people have over Chrome, and this is the Linux version, open source version, Chromium. A, the, a problem people have is privacy. Uh, they say that Chrome snoops too much into what you're doing and, and makes too many reports on your activity. Maybe, maybe not. That's left up to the individual to decide. Uh, the other forerunner is Mozilla's Firefox. Firefox is a very pleasing, fast, modern browser. Uh, again, it's, it has a wider range of plugins and add-ons that you can add to it. Firefox is known as being a very secure web browser. Um, in fact, its encryption module is FIPS 140-2 compliant, which means that it's... it's uh, good for use by governments as well as individuals so uh, it's it's also a very good browser it's not as fast as Google Google Chrome though um, and by fast I mean it, it doesn't compute and render web pages as fast as Chrome can and that's because of the engine that uh, Firefox uses Firefox uses an engine called gecko and Chrome uses an engine called WebKit. One of the things that makes Firefox stand out, uh, a lot of people seem to like its user interface. It's very intuitive, it's a nice menu-driven interface, but it's customizable. So, what if Firefox and Google Chrome had an illegitimate baby? A browser with Firefox's interface or a Firefox esque interface, but that uses Chrome's engine to render the web pages. Something as fast as Chrome and as friendly as Firefox. Interested? Enter Cupzilla. Cupzilla is an open source, free web browser. 
It's been around since about 2010, and if you're looking at it, it looks a lot like our friend Firefox. Almost identical, right? There you go again. Yes, they're very similar. Um, I've, I've been trying Cubzilla for a while. It came out in 2010, and I must say I'm very impressed. Even though it looks and is laid out like Firefox, it uses the WebKit engine that Chrome uses, so it makes it as fast as Chrome. And in my experience, I think it loads a little bit be a little bit faster. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Uh, it may have to do with the slimness of Cubzilla. Cubzilla is also very secure. Cubzilla comes with an ad blocker pre-installed that runs by default. It also blocks Flash. So if you go to YouTube.com, just for an example, let's go to YouTube and pick on the first one we see here. You'll see that the Flash is blocked by default. You actually have to click to make the Flash play. You'll also notice that there are no ads, and that's because they've been blocked by default some very nice features. Um, Cupzilla arranges its uh, its history, its uh, RSS feeder and bookmarks into the same library. You can manage them all from the same interface. It makes it very handy, very convenient. Also, it has a couple of neat features. You can import bookmarks from other browsers right from the file menu. You have the ability to save a full page screenshot with just a click. Also very handy. One of the things I really like about Cubzilla is that it functions on every platform. Everybody can run Cubzilla. Windows even has a portable version. There are download instructions for every major form of Linux. It works on Mac OS X, OS 2. It even works on Haiku, which is very interesting. And you can download the source code if you, you want to customize it. To install Cubzilla on an Ubuntu-based system is very easy. Just go to the Cubzilla website cupzilla.com slash download click on the Ubuntu icon and it'll give you instructions for installing Cupzilla all you have to do is copy and paste these codes into your terminal and it'll install it for you installation is very fast you'll be up and running in no time of course the icon to launch it will be under your internet settings in your menu right here Cupzilla. Cupzilla has a very nice um, options interface or preferences page laid out very intuitively gives you very fine control over your sys over your uh, browser has several themes installed by default just change the look of it so it's a very nice looking uh, very nice looking browser, very customizable. Look, there's even a, uh, a theme for the operating system we don't like and won't speak of. There you go. But you can control every aspect of the browser right here from this, from this interface. There are a few extensions that have been ported over. Uh, I'm not sure if they're planning on rolling in more extensions, it would be nice if they would. But they do have the basics covered. And like I said, I really like how it has the ad block and flash blocker in there by default. It makes for a very safe, secure browsing experience. Laid out very much like Mozilla, so it should be comfortable for just about anybody that's uh, that's, that's familiar with Firefox very fast it has a speed dial option which is pretty nice 
In fact, you can set this speed dial to be your uh, your default startup page, and you can add wallpaper from any uh, image on on the net or your uh, computer. Just very nice, very fast. It's just an all-around good web browser, and has become one of my favorites. Go on over to Cubzilla.com. Give it a check. Uh, tell me what you think of it. This has been N at Zero with another episode of Run Level Zero. Please subscribe, comment, or like my videos. And I'll be back with you shortly with another episode.